Welcome back to another one of everybody's favorite videos, a semester at sea Q&A from your friendly washed up old semester at sea spring 2020 alumni. <laughs> It's so crazy to think that it is 2021 and still not another semester at sea voyage has happened as of this point yet. So if you are about to be on the fall voyage, the spring 2022 voyage, or even the spring 2025 voyage, hi, welcome. I'm Gracie and I got to go on the pandemic version of semester at sea and still had the best two and a half months of my entire life. If you haven't seen any of my videos before, I will link my semester at sea playlist down below, also up in the corner for you to go and check out after you see this video. Like I said, semester at sea best two and a half months of my life and still so many of you guys have so many questions about semester at sea. If there are any other semester at sea related videos you wanna see, link them down below. Put a little question box up on my Instagram stories the other day asking you what you wanted to know about semester at sea. And here I am going to answer the most popularly asked questions that I haven't already answered before in my previous two Q and A's. I'm just gonna go through the ones that I screenshotted earlier and let's get into it. Lexi wants to know, can any major attend? Yes, you can be any major, go to any university. It just depends on how it's all gonna work into your school schedule and school classes for what you're able to take. I know people who took nothing toward their degree, whereas I took three out of my four classes went toward my major or one of my minors. So it really just depends on what you wanna do, if you have time to kill or if you don't care for what you wanna do. So many of you wanna know why I chose Semester at Sea over an exchange program for a semester. I knew I wanted to do Semester at Sea for a very long time. I'm talking like probably middle school and um, that I had just seen something about it and like there's no way I can go on a cruise ship for an entire semester. My family loves cruises. I've talked all about that before and how we go on a cruise every year for family vacation. Semester at Sea was actually my 21st cruise, I believe. So it's pretty insane. I knew that I loved cruising and I thought, wow, I could go to 12 countries in four months instead of just one country and really getting to know it. Also, if you are new here, I did live for a summer in Belgium, so I kind of know what it's like to live abroad in a country, and I really just knew that Semester at Sea was it for me. Definitely, if you are on the fence, check out some of my videos, and you can check out some other people's videos who have done traditional semester abroad programs and figure it out for yourself. I just knew Semester at Sea was the only one I wanted to do. Mackenzie wants to know, do only certain schools have this program Yes and no. Anybody from any university can apply and attend Semester at Sea, but not every university works with Semester at Sea for credits, for scholarship, anything like that. I attend the University of Alabama, Roll Tide, and they are an affiliate program with Semester at Sea, so my scholarship from Alabama transferred over to my Semester at Sea tuition, as well as I got awarded an additional scholarship from my university, whereas I know other students completely unenrolled from the semester at their university and went abroad on Semester at Sea, so it totally depends on your school, and I would definitely recommend checking your education abroad office and sitting down with them and talking about it if Semester at Sea is something you really wanna to do to figure out how it's gonna work with getting your credits transferred over and with getting maybe a scholarship transferred over. But as far as the Semester at Sea side goes, you can, I think, do anything. I know that there were students who were on gap years and students from universities all around the world. You can check the Semester at Sea website, which I will, of course, link down below if you wanna go check out all the specifics. Did you ever get sick of living on a boat? Yes and no. Here's the other thing, my voyage, super, super different from everybody else's experience from years past, from fall and spring voyages past, doesn't matter, because of course I went on in spring 2020 and that's when COVID-19 hit and we were on the ship a lot 
more than any other voyage had been before because we were denied from countries we were just trying to get out of asia and over to africa and we were on there for longer stretches of time than any of us really imagined i think our longest stretch was 18 days but don't quote me on that between vietnam and eventually getting off at mauritius i could probably calculate it but i'm not going to that being said having been on the ship a lot more than we ever thought it's crazy to look back and even to know while I was on semester at sea, we would always say the phrase, the ship is home. I mean, even after being off in a country for 11 days or in Vietnam, we were just so happy to get back to the ship and be in our cabins. It really does become your home. Yes, of course, we're re-annoyed. We're like, we wanna be in countries right now. We wanna be go exploring and traveling. But honestly, the ship is home and I love it so much. The only things, of course, that become annoying about that is lack of access to internet and Wi-Fi and being able to talk with my parents and talk with you guys in comments. Other than that, I really ended up truly loving the ship. A lot of us were like, the ship was our favorite port that we really got to go to because you just built such a community. You can just walk to your friends' doors. It was kind of like being in a freshman year dorm hall again where you're just like within an arm's length of any of your friends at any given point in time. So really is a special thing. This one cracks me up. It says, one country you missed out on because of COVID. I can give you a list of like six right off the bat that we missed just because of ports, which would be China, India, Malaysia, Ghana, Morocco, and Amsterdam, I believe are all the ones that I just got that we missed. Which out of those, I think the funniest thing is the one that I was super bummed out about was China. Which of course was the whole reason we got sort of screwed up on our voyage and the first place of course that they announced we were missing. If you go back, it's funny. I mean, we knew about it weeks before our parents did, I think a week and a half, and it was being called pneumonia in the beginning. It's just actually kind of insane to see COVID-19 transition the way it did, but I was really excited for China because I took Mandarin Chinese in high school um, for a couple of years and I had a really great semester at sea like excursion planned where you go play with pandas and walk the great wall of china so just having hyped it up in my head so much i wanted to go to china since like the eighth grade when i started to take mandarin chinese it really was a bummer plus we were like why are they even canceling it so i think that was one that i was really sad that we missed out on a great question from maddie she said how did this fit into the timeline of school in addition to merging a master's degree also if you are new here if you don't know i am getting my bachelor's and my master's in four years and this is something that I really prioritized and really wanted to do. I came in with quite a bit of credits from high school and I've never taken like the bare minimum of 15 credits. It just has kind of honestly never worked out that way in my schedule to take 15. It's always been 16, 17, or 18 credits, how I wanted to do everything. So I knew for me personally that I needed to do it this spring of my sophomore year because I knew I was gonna be starting that master's program my junior year and I wouldn't have been able to go with that master's program. I physically could not have been on semester at sea this past spring as a junior. And it's weird because most of my friends, like probably over 80% of my friends were all juniors at the time. So they have now all graduated college and I'm still sitting in college. Like I think there's like two or three of us left and it's crazy to think about, but this is how it worked for me. And because of my master's, I already was gonna graduate pretty early, which is why I added on my minors and why I added on a study abroad. And then they were like, yeah, you can still do your master's in four years. And I was like, okay, let's add it in. And that's just kind of how it all worked out for me. Uh, but again, figure out what's best for you and the timeline that you can work it into your school schedule because everyone is different. And kind of tacking onto that, Nicole asked the best time to go during college, which year and which semester. Again, for the year, you're gonna have to figure out how that's gonna work with your schedule based on if you're taking the credits from semester C and applying them towards something, or if you're just kind of going to go. The most popular were definitely sophomore and junior year. We had a couple of seniors who actually graduated on the ship made a couple of like gap year students not really freshmen freshmen don't really go the second semester of their freshman year best time to go really depends on you i know a lot of people who loved going in the fall i said I am not missing football season. I mean, I go to the University of Alabama. I was like, I'm not missing football season. I'm going in the spring. And that's kind of how I decided. And I feel like a lot of my friends decided that way too, because a lot of us go to some big SEC schools, Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama, and nobody wanted to miss their football season. But also there's some people who don't have football, don't care about football, want to go in the fall, and usually it's easier to get a spot going in the fall. So it all really just depends. So for me, it worked out of spring of my sophomore year. It asked how manageable is it price-wise for college students or how should I know what to save up? Again, 
there is a huge spectrum of things here and that's why I want to address this. I know people who had a complete and full ride on Semester at Sea through scholarships from their university, their big scholarships through Semester at Sea. I also know people who went absolutely full price, whatever you see on the website, add everything up, no scholarship. And there were a lot of people in between too. I happened to be in between there. My tuition ended up being just slightly cheaper than my tuition at Alabama. My typical tuition and sorority fees combined was more expensive than being on semester at sea with my like study abroad sorority tuition fees. And don't worry, that sorority fee was just a small little fee to keep my membership and to pay my dues to nationals and that was it. Like I didn't have to pay for any sisterhood events or food or housing or anything like that. But for me again, like I said, my tuition scholarship from Alabama transferred over as well as an additional scholarship from Alabama that transferred over and I also got two scholarships from semester at sea. So that's how my pricing worked out. But again, Semester at Sea has some huge scholarships, like full rides, anywhere from full ride to like merit scholarships of a couple thousand dollars. I always say every dollar counts. So, so my recommendation would be to see what your university can offer you and what all transfers over, and then see what you qualify for, or what you wanna apply for, for Semester at Sea scholarships, because they have a ton of scholarships available to students. Courtney, great question, because I feel like not a lot of people talk about this. She is going this fall, congratulations, that's so exciting y'all's itinerary looks amazing malta literally chef's kiss i love it there anyway um she asked how much did you bring to tip the staff okay, so hear me out my biggest tip is to tip your housekeeper some money right in the beginning i think we might have given him like 25 dollars the first week and 25 dollars the second week like a big 50 dollars tip right away and angelito loved us so much we had a great time whenever we needed extra towels or anything like that he was always willing to help and then every couple weeks or so two or three weeks we would just leave out some more money rather than just doing one big tip at the end can't really remember exactly how much we tipped him out but i want to say it was around 150 dollars each don't quote me on that i'm not 100 percent positive honestly tip them really really well in the beginning and you will have no problems as long as you're unproblematic um, on your ship and in your cabin we always kind of like to to clean up before him but it'd be nice to like leave him a 20 here and there and then at the end i think we collectively tipped him like 120 dollars. so it might have been more than 300 at that point but like 50 pretty much right in the beginning and 120 at the end and like 20s in between they work so hard and they're so great about getting your cabin done really quickly and working around your schedule so it is so worth it and they are so so kind get to know your housekeeping staff and wants to know what a normal day looks like well i'm glad you asked i have an entire playlist full of day in my life and poor day in my life every day is a different day on the ship you have a days you have b days you have neptune day you have study days there are so many different things and always something going on um so there's no real normal day, but I do have a couple of normal days on those playlists. So I will leave it down below and also in the corner for you guys to check it out. I highly recommend. I'll go back and watch those videos and shed a tear and it just was really a great time in my life. Laura asks, how does the Wi-Fi work? Oh, so glad you asked. Be prepared when you get on semester at sea to not have internet connection to anyone in the outside world. There's a Wi-Fi that everybody gets to go on. You can see your home port, which is basically like a website with a front page that only people on the ship can see like if I were to try and go in home port right now I wouldn't be able to see it you have to be on that certain Wi-Fi and be able to see you know if it's people's birthdays what's going on on the ship just kind of like a little newsletter every single morning to keep you updated in addition to that there are a couple links that they provide you for free certain links to Wikipedia certain links um, to some other places to look up some stuff for classes but other than that that's how limited the Wi-Fi is Then there are a few computers in the library which pretty much have full Wi-Fi access uh, because of COVID and people staying on there for hours and hours longer than you typically would on a voyage, they ended up making you sign up for them and that was a whole nightmare. But before COVID hit, like the first couple weeks of the voyage, you can just go and sit and do things. Sometimes professors needed you to do things on websites that were not included on Semester at Sea's website. Sometimes you wanted to just like book a capsule hotel for your upcoming trip to Japan. So we would go there and book them, but you couldn't go on any kind of social media like Facebook or Instagram. I think it would block those out on those computers. Computers, so you're limited to your phone and on your phone you got just about seven minutes a day if you were to go at a super unpopular time of the day you might get slightly longer but not by much uh, to do whatever you want it usually can get up one Instagram post uh, not even a full 15 second Instagram story video I was able to whatsapp my mom for a little bit over seven minutes a couple times because it takes up very minimal Wi-Fi but it just honestly depends 
and it's very unpredictable and it's very crazy and sometimes you can't do anything at all on the wi-fi most people's instagrams never even loaded and i was one of the lucky ones where i could just kind of scroll through my feed i wouldn't like them because it would take up too much wi-fi but most people's instagrams would be blank so again really just depends uh but it's pretty terrible but it makes the experience all that much better you get a really special bond with those people because of the lack of internet you can't hide behind your phone so it kind of forced you to get those connections and it, it really made it special and the last one rate it a one out of ten covid and everything honestly as much heartache as it sometimes caused us when there were so many reroutes and different things going on i would give it a 10 over a 10 i mean a 15 out of 10 it really is a remarkable experience that i was able to have i'm so grateful every single day to have done semester at sea i've had my life completely changed i feel like a whole new person in the best way possible after semester at sea they were the best days of my life so far and i can't recommend it enough Seriously, I hope to go back someday. Everybody keeps asking me and I really hope someday, somehow, somewhere to be back on the World Odyssey and in that community of people. Although it won't be the same, I would just absolutely love to do it again. So who knows what the future will hold. Thank you guys so much for watching and submitting your questions. If you have any other video requests having to do this semester at sea, please leave them down below and I will try and get to them. I love to help people on all things semester at sea because again, Greatest thing of my entire life, what can I say? If you're new here, make sure that you subscribe down below so you don't miss another video. I'm doing a ton of travel content coming soon and hopefully in the future, I would love to turn this channel into full-time travel. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of that. In addition, you can follow me on Instagram. You can go stock all my semester at sea posts and you can see all my recent posts as well. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye.